Our God is mighty to save, and we're so glad you decided to join us here on Hope Today. I'm Anna, and I'm joined with Tom and with Sydney, and we have an incredible story today. You know, we surely do. You know, coming up on Hope Today, you don't want to miss the story of a woman who survived a terrorist bomb attack on TWA Flight 840. In a moment, you're going to meet Jeanette Chafee, who's going to share her harrowing experience and the guardian angel God placed in her path to protect her. I mean, Tom and Anna, how many times do we have the opportunity to meet someone that survived something so scary? But I mean, it's amazing the testimony, the miracles that she experienced. I'm really excited for all of you to meet her in just a moment. It's going to be incredible what she shares. Oh, I mean, I can't wait to hear the story. I mean, it's just, again, and uh, what kind of thing would we, uh, how would we even react to that? I don't think any of us can know. You know, as I, as I think about the, the miraculous saving of her life, I just want to say that God is a God of miracles and maybe you need a miracle today. Maybe there's something in your life you can't see where uh, God is going to open a door for you, but he can do it even when you don't see it. And I want to just remind you that there's prayer partners available always 24 seven here at the ministry. So you can call right now and get a hold of someone who can pray with you and believe with you for that miracle. Yeah. Today's story is just going to inspire you so much because it's a needed reminder for many of us of how big our God is, how great and powerful and mighty he is to save and how he is there in times of trouble for you. Oftentimes we read those stories in the Bible that almost seem unbelievable and we wonder like, why, where is God doing those things today? This story is going to be such an encouragement because woo, God has a way of showing up in big ways to save. You know, one of my favorite names for God, or like it's a name of God that we often read in the Bible, and it says Adonai Sabaoth, that he is the Lord of the angel armies. Can you just stop for a second? I don't think we can fathom that. I mean, you know, we think about, you know, the military here in the United States, but God is military is like tons, a trillion times bigger than that. And that is the God that we serve. So no matter what battle we're facing, no matter what attacks that we're going through, the God of the angel armies will step into your situation. He'll step into your battle. He will part the Red Sea. He will take out things and send his fire. I mean, it is exciting to be considered a son and a daughter of God. And so we just want to encourage you today. I don't know. We don't know what storms you're facing. We don't know what battles you're going through, but we are so glad that you are tuned in today so that you know that the God of the angel armies is fighting on your behalf. Well, when we come back in 60 seconds, God's extravagant grace after terror in the sky, Jeanette Chafee's story of surviving a midair explosion on flight TW880. We'll be right back. No matter your age or circumstances, God wants you to move forward. Join best-selling author and teacher, Dr. David Jeremiah in a masterclass, revealing how to live fearlessly. You'll discover that it's never too late to find your purpose. Dr. David Jeremiah reveals powerful ways for people of any age to live a life that's meaningful. Inside Forward, you'll uncover strong Bible teaching coupled with incredible real life stories and practical biblical insight. Learn how God wants to expand your dreams, give you divine direction, equip you with tools to overcome fear, and much more. Request your copy of this life-changing book when you support Cornerstone Television. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Find airtimes for Turning Point with Dr. David Jeremiah at ctvn.org. Donate and request his book, Forward. Thank you for your partnership with Cornerstone TV. Life was never the same for Jeanette Chafee after she survived a terrorist bomb explosion on TWA flight 840 on April 2nd, 1986. She was only 14 feet away from the blast on the plane. Jeanette joins us now to share her story and the miracles that unfolded following that catastrophic event. Jeanette, we are so glad to have you with us. Oh, thank you, it's, it's a joy to be here. So Jeanette, let's get into this because what you've experienced is for many of us, like our worst nightmare when we're flying that experience. Can you take us back to your experience on that day? Well, it was just a normal, regular day. My friend's family took me to the airport. I prayed, but I forget what I prayed. But uh, 15 hours later, we were flying from Oregon to Athens, to, to Rome to Athens. Uh, dead tired, went to sleep. When I woke up, 
I thought I had died because I thought a gun had shot me in the head because it was a blast. And then I went, oh no, I'm alive because we're falling, dead fall out of the sky. And I knew we were in terrible trouble. My mask didn't work. I looked out the window down below and uh, I knew this would be our coffin. There's no inside ceiling. The wires and the tubes are hanging down. My mask doesn't work. I grabbed another one and I put the mask on. I said, oh Jesus, help us because no one even knows we're in trouble. And besides, no one but you can help us. Please don't let us die. And from that point on, no more people did die. So I turned to my right, kitty corner, 14 feet away, and that's when I saw the three by nine hole. When I saw the three by nine foot hole, then I said, oh Jesus, help us, help us. So it was this blastering, loud sound, like a train going through the plain. The smoke and the, was coming down so thick, I could hardly see a little bit, even though there was blue sky outside. And, and it sounded like just unbelievable. You couldn't, you couldn't even shout this close to talk to. It was so horrible and big glumpy place, pieces falling through the sky and in my hair and everything. So that's what happened. And we kept flying. We flew for 40 minutes with no sight of the plane. And I looked back and to my horror, then I saw three rows of seats with no people. In. And then they started bringing the hurt people up all around me. So the couple next to me, had, she'd never been out of Saudi Arabia. She didn't speak English, but Ibrahim spoke a little English. So I would talk to him. Uh, her leg was very badly burned. Part of her dress was, you know, was burned off and her shoes and everything. And she was so scared. So I would talk to them a little bit. But Ibrahim was sitting next to the man where the bomb had been put under his, in his life seat. And he said he saw people go out, but I was, I was hoping he was wrong. Mm -hmm. But I knew when they started bringing people and laying Myrtle out in front of me in the seat ahead that, that it was very, very terrible. I knew it was very horrific and I couldn't do anything to help that I just kept, from the time I was born, my parents always said, you're in trouble. You just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus help us. Jesus helped. And that's the only way I could ever get through that, to think that the peace of God, the passes that all understanding could exist when I'm grabbing another mask, putting it on, throwing it over, sounds real easy, not easy, not easy at all. And so one side I'm thinking, this is our coffin. Then I said, oh no, Jesus, you have the final say. And please let us live. I just wanna hold your hand because what you've just shared is, I don't think any of us can fathom and I can just see the tears and the emotion just like reliving that traumatic event, just seeing the tears in your eyes. And I just like, you're just even hearing like you describe it, I'm just, I feel like a lot of us just left in like awe and shock. And you know, it's truly a miracle what happened. I mean, four people did lose their lives that day. There were seven injured, but there was, you were many of the survivors and how the pilot was able to land the plane. And can you just share with us, there was miracles that God, like even afterwards, like the woman sitting next to you. Can you share that story mm. of, that, of that miracle? Yes. So we, it's a very packed flight, yeah. so packed in fact, that an off-duty whole series of airport people were on the plane, so we were very full. So I was in 8A, but when I got on, there was this Greek lady sitting, um, not, we had an empty seat, but she was sitting there and she had very broken English. And she said to me, um, am I seated in the right seat? Because people were coming and sitting down there. And I, so I talked to her, I spoke to her. And I said, yes, you're in the right seat. 
till a few a few minutes later we had lunch. Normally you don't look at the plane and see who's eating lunch, but yeah. I did with her and I never forgot it. Then I put my pillow down and went to sleep when the bomb went off. When the bomb went off and I turned and looked, later on I said, thought, oh, that lady's not there. Of course, I didn't think of it at the moment. But later I found out she was nowhere on the plane. She'd never been on the plane, except she was. She just looked like a regular lady, wasn't scary. Then I knew. I knew that God had put an angel on the plan, on the plane so that we wouldn't disintegrate it's the only time in history that a plane has ever had a bomb carried on board a commercial plane and exploded in the air. And we flew for 40 minutes at 550 to 600 miles an hour with a three by nine foot hole. And every once in a while I would turn and look and say, oh no, is the hole still there? So much later on, we. We're ready to get off. Then I thought, oh, then I can help somebody, and I'm helping this man in the back. She was no nowhere. But across the aisle from me, I'd been reading my little Gideon Bible, mm -hmm. and I looked at that man, and I went, I bet he has a little Bible. He's reading it, too. Guess what he was reading? What was he reading? Psalms 9111. I will give, the Lord says, I will give an angel to carry you and keep you in all your ways. And that's what he did that day. So I asked Ernie, Ernie, where was the lady? You were as close to her as I am to you, right? He said, oh, I, ne I never saw her again. Well, I said, I know, I, I never saw her again either. Where did she go? Then I knew, I knew that God had saved our lives for a reason. I didn't know what the reason was, but I knew for a very specific purpose. And can you just talk to us, how did, you know, God from that moment moving forward even just help heal you from that very traumatic situation that you went through? Well, first when he'd been getting off the plane, because even though they said we're landing, I thought, landing? Anybody ever say anything about landing? <laughs> we're, we're not gonna land. But slowly we, we did come down uh, and pretty hard landing, but we made it. Uh, but I wasn't expecting to see puddles of blood when I came down the metal stairs. But I was the last one off, everybody got off after me. But I went and got down my knees by the hole and all the, the, you know, the stewardesses were there too and everything and we were looking at this and talking about it. And then the man said, uh, oh, it was a bomb. I said, no, it, it's not a bomb. Bombs don't happen to anybody I know. And then they said, get off, get off. So I gave her the little Gideon Bible. Okay, I'll pray for you. Here's my little Gideon Bible. <laughs> but then we were in the room in Athens. No televisions, no cameras, no restrooms, no leaving, no updates. We're all just sitting on the floor. I'm on the sitting on the floor in the back. They had a few journalists come in, interview people. I was one of the few chosen to go on the air in America so people would know that we were alive. They were just saying people were alive and dead. And that's how my mom found out that I was alive. And of course, very bittersweet, but okay. happy for her that I was alive, but very bittersweet. So from that point on, after that happened, then I said, I don't know why the Lord allowed me to live when people right around me were all dying. All I know, is you have to have peace with God. Now, th there's not another moment. There's no, no, not another moment. This is the time, this is the time. If someone has not ever accepted Jesus as their savior, the youngest one that died was eight months old. So it has nothing to do with age and death. You have to be ready. And the only way to do that is through Jesus Christ. So if you haven't been through a terrorist attack, everybody has been very fearful, many different kinds of hurts and agonies. I never thought 
I would probably smile or be happy again. I wasn't for about a year. And then the man who was the first one off the plane that got sucked out of the plane first, his wife called me one day and said, I understand you can tell me what happened. And I said, yes, I, I can. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. So have to have peace with God. So many people think they know God, but they only know about him. They've never asked him to come in their life and change them and ask them for forgiveness of sins and to take him as Jesus, you take care of my life. So, but yet, that day on the plane, I wasn't thinking about my car or anything else or my bank account or how I looked. All I cared about was that Jesus was with me. It was my only hope. There was no other hope. No one could help us but Jesus. No one could help us. What you just shared, Jeanette, that is, it's just so powerful because you were, it's like life and death was like staring in the face, but it is so true that all we have our hope is in Christ and Christ alone. Mm -hmm. And it's through his blood that we have life and we have redemption. And I just think it is so powerful what you shared. And just if you're listening right now and you have never received Jesus into your life, let this be a sign to you that Jesus is saying, come home to me. Let me love on you. Jesus paid the ultimate price for us. The ultimate price that we could not pay. Receive Jesus today. And we have a number on our screen, 888-665-4483. If you want to receive Jesus today, give us a call. We have prayer partners that are standing by to pray with you and to lead you into that prayer. And you know, Jeanette, I just really appreciate just the courage you have to just like share of like what you walk through and what you endured and just even the heart of it and the reason why that God, you know, without a shadow of a doubt mm -hmm. that he saved you is for mm -hmm. the sake mm -hmm. of his gospel. Mm -hmm. That is your purpose. Tell us now, like what life has been like, you know, um, for mm -hmm. you, like what you're doing, living your life for Jesus. Then I said, the reason I'm alive, all I know is I want to tell everyone that now is the time to get right with God. There is no later time. You can never count on it. Now is the time. So profoundly said. And, you know, Jeanette, she's written a book called Extravagant Graces, and it's 23 inspiring stories of facing impossible odds where it's her stories and so many others about the extravagant grace of Jesus. Jeanette, we are so grateful to have you with us. And we have one last picture that we want to share with our audience because you actually, years later, had an opportunity to meet the captain. I did. They landed, invited like, me yeah. to come, and we spent five hours together. Yeah. There and when is. I was there, he came out of the house to come out and greet me. And we walked down on the beach together. It was very sweet. What a beautiful Captain circle. Peterson actually had come out of the cockpit to help the people that were hurt. And that was the kind of man he was. He, yes. So he told me how far we fell. Hmm. He knew exactly. Now. He was the he was the captain. Yeah. <laughs> He's my hero. Yeah. Yes. Tr truly, Chula. Thank you so much, Jeanette, for just being with us today, sharing your story and your heart. I know I am touched. I know you all are touched, and we are just so grateful for you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And we will be right back right after this. Hey, Tom, what you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope 
happens here. Extravagant Grace is what an incredible story that we just heard that Jeanette just shared with Sydney and with all of us about God's extravagant grace and about his protection as well. And, uh, you know, Sydney, as you hear, hear that story, I mean, what, what, what things uh, about Jeanette's story just, just pop out to you, just stand out to you? I think I'm just like, there's certain times when we're, you know, we get to do interviews on the show and some just, just like, I feel like I'm just still sitting in it. Like what she just shared about the trauma, the horrific things, but how God stepped in and how she called out the name of Jesus. My goodness. It's just, for me, that was just a moment. And just even thinking like what she was saying is like, the time is now. I think a lot of us, we take our day to day for granted that we just expect we're gonna wake up and we're gonna live and we just don't know what can happen. And so that's just really struck me. Um, it's just the time, the time is now for Jesus and we need to take that really seriously like never before. Right, absolutely. We're so guilty here in our Western culture of being about the business of making money, of running to and fro, of achieving and accomplishing. And there's nothing wrong with pursuing those things. But when we think that we can do all of those things separate from God, we are mistaken. We will run until we are exhausted. We will keep drinking of the things of this world, but never fully be satisfied. And friend, that is because you were made for eternity. You were made for a relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe you feel like you've been doing just fine up until now. Maybe things are still going well and you feel like it's all in your own power. Know that God has been with you, enabling you, empowering you to live the life you're living every step. And he doesn't want your pride and your ego thinking like you've accomplished all this stuff. He wants you to turn to him because everything in this world is fleeting. You can't take it with you. And last time I checked, the human mortality rate is 100%. So today, don't keep going on as you have. If you have never surrendered your life to Jesus, today is the day because you don't know what the next hour holds for you. Well, that is absolutely true. You know how Jesus said it? He said, you know, he, he told a parable of a man who said, I've got lots of stuff. I'm going to build bigger barns. I'm going to store it all that in there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm set. But Jesus said, and it sounds harsh to us, but he said, you fool, you fool. Tonight, your soul will be required of you. Tonight, some people are going to pass into eternity. I don't want anyone, I don't want any one of you, Jesus doesn't want any one of you to pass into eternity without knowing the one who created you, without knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior. I just want to take a moment and say to you that there are things that, that, uh, that we need to understand to do that. The main, main thing is to cry out. Just cry out to the Lord and say, God, save me. Save me for, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Now, you know, the, there's, not, there's no magic words here. There's no magic prayer. There's just a, a, a cry of your heart to realize, yes, God loves you. He cares about you. He's got a plan and purpose for your life. But we've all sinned that's blocking that purpose in God's life, in our life, God's purpose in our life. We've sinned. It's built this barrier between us and God. And we can't do anything. We can't be good enough. We can't be perfect enough to tear that wall down. But Jesus on the cross broke through that wall, took the burden of our sin upon himself, the, the penalty of our sin upon himself, and died and rose again that we might be able to die to ourselves and rise to new life in Christ. Do you want to do that today? Don't put that off. Don't put that off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just pray with you right now. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to lead you in a prayer. And again, I, I hasten to add, these are not magic words. Y your prayer is just as good. But I just, I've found that people many times want someone to lead them in a prayer. So just, just pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I need you. I realize that. I've sinned against you. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and be my Savior and Lord. And I will follow you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the strength to follow you, but make me a new creature in Christ. Old things passed away. 
all things become new. I trust in you now for salvation and for newness of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you can call our prayer partners and say, I just prayed with Tom on TV. And they'll rejoice with you, pray with you, and uh, they'll also send you something as a, as a follow-up. But God has opened a new door in your life. I just love that Jesus is the door, that Jesus is the way. He's the only way that we will find salvation. He's the only one that has the power to save. There is no other God but Jesus. And I just feel like there's certain moments where it's just like, I'll be completely honest, I don't even know the words to say right now because the way my heart just feels in this moment when I just think about people and I think about you and I think about maybe what you're going through on the other side of the screen and maybe that you feel like right now that everything is falling apart in your life and you just feel like you have no hope but this is the greatest reason why we exist here at Cornerstone Television Network and why we produce hope today is that you will grab onto the hope of Jesus, that you know that you can cling on to him and you can hold on to him in your darkest hour when all hell is breaking loose and you feel like your life is falling apart. This is the God that we have, that he will step right into your situation. He will step right into that pain. He will step right into the pit. I love that it says in Psalms that he redeems us from the pit of destruction the terror by day may come, but you know what's amazing is Jesus will step in and he's the one that takes the arrows and the pains and the bullet holes and the things, the bombs that are going off in our life. So today, this is you. This is why we simply exist to do this program because the only hope is we have is in Jesus. And we are just so grateful that you joined us on this program today. I'm sorry that I'm crying. <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna be really emotional, but Jeanette's story just truly, truly touched me today. And I'm sure it touched all of you as well. And we're so glad that you joined us on Hope today. It is an honor and it is a joy that we have the privilege to come into your living room, your bedroom, wherever you're watching from, to send you the love and hope of Jesus today. We hope you have a great one. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow. On tomorrow's Hope Today, using music to shine the light of Jesus and bring people together. Music recording artist John Shabaglian aims to bring God's children together through his uplifting songs about peace and reconciliation. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.